Hey everybody, Oliver again from Blue Liquid Labs. You know, the other day I had somebody come to me with um, really stiff like rear suspension, like very bad small bump compliance. It was a totally modern, like specialized turbo, um, you know, one of those e-bikes. And it had uh, a RockShox Monarch on the back. It had a, a Clevis, Clevis uh, setup where it was like on one end, it was bearings on one, one end of the shock, it was bearings and on the other end of the shock, it was like a standard DU bushing. So, you know, the DU bushing was so tight. That was the one thing that was destroying the small bump compliance of that particular bike. You know, this has been a problem on so many different bikes for like the past 20 years. It was a problem then. It was a problem 10 years ago. And I'm seeing now that it's still a problem today. So I have um, a tool that I came up with that'll basically, in the same way that you'll burnish your, your fork with one of my burnishing tools, one of my sizing tools, you can do the same kind of sizing or burnishing uh, to your rear uh, shock DU bushing. So I'm going to show you how the tool works on this particular shock that I have just kicking around. So this particular one, there's nothing weird about the size of the pin that goes through this Fox shock. It's a, I measured it, it's a really standard size, you know, like half inch, uh, it comes out to 12.72. But, you know, especially if you put it in a fresh DU bushing, man, like it's unbelievably tight. Totally destroys the small bump compliance. And you don't need a vise, I'm just gonna point it down here for you guys. You don't need a vise to prove it to yourself. You can just like clamp it in your frame and you know, if, if it's barely moving, like how that one is, it's gonna wreck your small bump compliance, you know? So, okay, what does the tool look like? There's a few parts to it. I'm just gonna show you right here. The main part is like this, uh, this sort of T, I don't know what you wanna call it, T-handle or something like that. Not really a T-handle exactly, but it's a little T-shaped tool. This is basically the receiver for, uh, for the, for the sizing die that's gonna go in there. The same tool to try to, by the way, to try to push this pin out by hand, like if you're a home mechanic, it's like, that's a real problem, you know? You have to either make a tool for it or figure something out with a little receiver and a nut and bolt, or or you gotta have a vise and you have to wrangle it out of there with a with a vise. So this tool will do all three things. It'll, it'll take out your really uh, hard to get out pins um, the tool also has a feature where it doubles as a DU bushing insert removal insertion uh, type setup, and the same tool also sizes these um, these DU bushings. So I'm just going to show you how it works. Okay, so first things first, we got to get this really difficult pin out of there, and you can do this with all hand tools. I've made this so that it's all doable with hand tools. I include this little. This little pin, it's got a few steps on it. It's got an eight millimeter step and a 10 millimeter step. And then the tool itself is that guy right there, runs on a 10 millimeter hexagon. And the cool thing about this tool is that there is a thrust bearing. So it's a six millimeter threaded shaft and there is a thrust bearing inside of here. It can uh, take a lot of force, that thrust bearing. So you put this uh, stepped adapter over the six mil shaft. If you have six mil hardware, it just centers itself because it's a six millimeter threaded rod. And as I said before, you got your eight millimeter step and your 10 millimeter step in there. So it does all the, all of the regular shock hardware. So I'm just gonna show you. All right. And so all it takes to push is you can use a 10 millimeter box wrench to push on it. You can use a 10 millimeter socket to push on it. Or if you wanna get really fancy, uh, I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys already have my fork sizing or fork burnishing T-handle. You can actually use that together with this tool if you have this 10 millimeter hexagon arbor thing that I made. You just screw it on. and the job becomes really easy. And you don't need, you know, especially for home mechanics, you don't need a vise. You can just do this at your house, do this in your apartment, wherever. And uh, you can help yourself get some better small bump, small bump compliance out of your suspension. All right, let me point this down a little bit more. All right. Okay, so once the pin is out, 
now we're going to get to the sizing or burnishing part of this job. So what I have, I've come up with three sizes that cover all the pins that I've seen so far. And the way I mark the three sizes of sizing dies, I have one, one circle, I don't know if you can see the circle in the middle for your first size, two circles, and you see it. There we go, two circles for the second size, three, three circles for the third size, okay? So we're gonna start out with one circle. And the whole object of the game is to try to get this pin. The pin's gotta have some resistance as it goes in the deal bushing. You don't want it to be loose and sloppy, but you should be able to just push it in with your thumb. That's what we're going for. All right. So once again, just like with all the other operations you can use, just use any hand tool that you might already have. And these sizing dies, I designed them to be used with rotation because burnishing is a statistical process where it's not really good enough to have a die go in straight through. Uh, you gotta have rotation in order to make sure that the die is hitting all of the low spots uh, all the way around. It just, that's your best way of ensuring good roundness on any kind of a bushing. You gotta have rotation, right? All right, so I can feel it's almost free. All right, there it is. And we are gonna test that pin. I can tell ah, it's got a little bit of resistance still. So we're gonna go with the two circle die. And we're gonna see what happens, see how it feels after number two die. There's number two. Yeah. And I'll use, this time I'll use this handle, show you how easy it is. And with a vise, oh man, this becomes even easier, but it's almost like cheating. But, not every, not everybody is equipped with a vice at home. And even in shop situations, you know, I've been in situations myself where I was working and there was a, the place was set up such that there were maybe four or five employees and only one vice, you know, so the vice is not always available. So it helps to be able to do things by hand, even in a shop situation. All right, let's, let's feel that. And a little better, but, I can tell it's still got some resistance. So for this one, we're gonna go with the number three. Let's see here, number three die. Right after this, I'm gonna show you guys uh, how the same tool also presses out and presses in DU bushings. And I've included that because, you know, DU bushings, they're, they're really light. You can, if, it, if they're done right and you size them right, they can perform well. And, you know, even if you're, a, you're like a heavy duty rider, you can replace your DU bushings after a year. They're only three to five bucks, you know? So they're really, Shouldn't be much of a barrier, in my opinion, for, uh, for replacing a DU bushing. All right, let's feel that. All right, now we're talking. Look at that. You see that? I can push it. See, I can, it's still, it's still snug. There's no play, but I can push it with my hand, with my thumb. And we can do the same test in the vise. And so, Look how much easier that is to move around. 
You know, that's really going to help you out with your small bump compliance. You know, like a, what they say with bushings is, well, it's not, maybe, maybe it's not a big deal because the bushing is on an end of the shock that doesn't get a lot of rotation. Man, like when you size even one of the bushings that doesn't have much rotation, still makes all the difference, uh, all the difference in the world, you know? So there's really no, there's really no reason not to do this really helps out a lot. So now I'm going to show you the um, DU bushing replacement procedure using the exact same tool, okay? So for that guy, we got one of these. This is probably pretty similar to a setup that you're already used to seeing from, you know, other DU bushing tools. So just like that. Got to get this sizing die out of here. And once again, any hand tool that you already own, it will work just fine. There it is, it's loose. Do you bushing just gets put into the receiver? There it is. And as with tools you're probably used to, all you have to do, flip that guy around, put the DU bushing on, and we're ready to press. And I'll use just because I have it, I'll just use my use my fork burnishing handle. And there is a stop integrated with the tool. So you can, you don't, you don't ever have to worry about overdoing it. It just stops in the perfect position. So that's that.